Yes, you know, it is rocket science. <laughs> okay. So, uh, hi, uh, uh, this is Jimmy Vivino. I'm Jeff Garland. Welcome to Grandma's Grandma's uh, Puppet Theater. That's right. That's what that's We're going to have well, a new name every really, time. We go through this thing because it is... It's Jeff and Jimmy's couch of guitars. guitars. Yeah, but you know why? Why just every time? Every next time you make up. I'll a title. make one up oh, next no, time. Yeah. And, then you, and, and if you feel like writing in and making one up, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, please do. <laughs> but our guest today is Elliot Easton, uh, one of uh, my favorite all-time guitarists, who uh, was in a band that changed my life. I can say that because prior to the Cars, the Cars first album, the Cars opened me up to punk and New Wave. Prior to that, and no offense to, let's say, the band Chicago, mm -hmm. who I loved, but it was later Chicago, which was more MOR, softer rock stuff. I mean, Terry Kath oh, and yeah, those, it was first, gone. Yeah, those, yeah. those first it was three different. albums, four albums, yeah. uh, is like amazing. No doubt, they I, changed. By the way, yeah. go on YouTube and watch I Am A Man or, or, with or, him. Oh, he's ridiculous. Or, or ridiculous. on YouTube, if you, and this, we gotta stay on Terry for a minute since right. you are from Chicago. Okay, yeah. And they're from Evanston, I think. Or, no, no, they're all over. Uh, Chicago Land, Chicago as they call Land. it. <laughs> yeah, Chicago but, uh, Land. Uh, if you if you if you go to YouTube and look for isolated guitar, twenty five or sixty four. Oh yes, I've, I've it's seen. It's unbelievable. Yes. You no, want to just ridiculous. put your guitar in the case and say that's it. <laughs> but anyhow, back to if I may, Mr. Elliot Easton. So that album to me was. It took me a week even to comprehend it, and then it, like that's an album even to this day. It's always new stuff for me. But the sound of that album sounded like nothing else, nothing else to Thank me. You. Thank uh, you. And it so was much. just, it was beautiful. And then I told you when I drove up to uh, here today at Gibson, I was blasting for Shooby Doo. You got to do Shooby Doo first <laughs> into Candy O. <laughs> it just sets up the power of Candy O. You sort of go along with Shooby Doo. It's fun. No, but the but order is important. The, the order is the order is important. Should be the, like what, like when the, you make the, a record, the, yeah. it, there used yeah. to be a thing that really mattered called the running order. The running order. And the, and what was on side one, what was on what side two. Was in the two. middle of the second side. Right. You, you and know, now in our heads, right? Yeah. Well, Any you know, records, guy, you hear the next song. The don't first you? guy to make fun of that was Petty. On <laughs> I forget which album. On the CD, he says. We're going to wait for the people who, by a long shot, have the album to turn over their albums now. <laughs> and then I think they play like animal music. That's what oh, yeah. messed me up about the, the, the British Beatle releases. I expect to hear a certain song. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Or that, a certain amount of the, reverb, yeah, too. Yeah, well, it, yeah, exactly. But, you know, thank you for that compliment. Sure. So, you know, my perception of that it was very similar. It seemed like at the time that the cars came out, it would be like, maybe the most right of center album in a, a record collection of a punk rocker, right? It would be the most sort of m mainstream record right. that a guy who had like was into punk rock. And it would be the most out there punky record in a collection that was filled with Foreigner and Aerosmith. It was like, what? But by the way, what? that's where I was. And yeah. so, so for me, it woke me up and opened me up to a whole other world. Plus, a band dig. with a band with two great lead singers. Yeah, is always oh, you know it's a little. I'm bit, a huge Benjamin Orr oh, fan. Oh well, you know he's <laughs> he's uh, he was irreplaceable, really as oh, as yeah. a singer. And I heard he was a great dude. Great, the best. That's a, I mean, he had the first I mean, and last hit. Right? Benny Orzechowski from Parma. Outside Cleveland, man, mm. just salt of the earth. Oh yeah, that was his name. Yeah, yeah. They called yeah. him Benny Eleven Letters. He was like, you know, he was in bands on Upbeat and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. In the mid sixties, because yeah, was, Upbeat. Like, I remember Upbeat. Yeah. Jeff Kutesh and Upbeat. Um, but yeah, he was, he just liked to ride his motorcycle, and he had like a, a snow plow on his blazer. I lived in the same town as him. That's yeah. bar. And on when it would snow, he'd come around all the neighbors and plow out their driveways for them. He just loved. It. He was that kind of guy. Oh, yeah, you so two guys cool. are from Long Island, sweetheart. right? I'm the only one. You're the only one. And you, how did you get up there? I went to Berkeley College of Music. Okay, oh, how, how, how long? To go to but you didn't finish. No, nobody got <laughs> Nobody By the way, if you finish, you have thing. to stay I dropped teach. out of college to, because I became a comedian. I went yeah. one semester yeah, to college, of, and then I was by like... By the way, I'm pro-education. Yeah. I always told my kids, I don't care about a degree. Degree's delightful. But just get an education. I started in comedy at 20. 
I was, I dropped out of school, passed auditions at 20, and I was off to the races. And everyone I hung out with, except for Brian Regan, we started, he started a year before me, we started together. But except for him, I was hanging out with 30 year olds right and left yeah. and 20. And learning. That was yeah. learning about life. Apprenticeship. Yeah, without yeah. a doubt, without a doubt. So anyway, I saw you guys. I'm from Chicago. Park but, West. What's that? Park West. No, no, no. I saw you guys <laughs> on the Candio tour at Day and no, Miami Highlight. Oh, yeah. You played Miami Highlight. Like and the weirdest. Highlight Fronton. Highlight Fronton. I remember this so clearly. I, I was too. so. I loved it. And I, there was this <clears throat> little play. This is, at Highlight Frontons, the next players up would always be sitting in this glass encased thing, the plastic. Right, case looking. Thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. And they're going up next. <laughs> Your band, before the show was on, as people are sitting, are all standing in this glass case. <laughs> Not engaging anyone, just standing there, and it was so fucking weird to me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. I was like, "What the? Is fuck that like a, in case of emergency?" And the Brent, band comes did out. We know that we could be seen. Oh yeah, you guys, but oh. you guys didn't acknowledge oh. that anyone was looking at you guys, <laughs> and you were talking you amongst yourselves. You know what I remember yourselves. about that show? What? It was Florida. It was damp and hot. Yeah. And. I was in the dressing room, and a palmetto bug. It looked like the biggest cockroach. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, palmetto bugs, oh. they also Big. fly. To Food know of, that that's your memory, <laughs> memory of memory. that show. Well, Food of the we gods. We were on that night. No, 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 no. <laughs> there was a fucking uh, cockroach, which is yeah. a palmetto, the size of my head. Because yeah. the show was another hotel in another stage. I don't remember the, right. what happened at, on that, that show. Was a, bit traumatic, the dressing room. a bit traumatic, too. A bit traumatic. I never, I never saw, I never saw it, Do you remember it was pre or post show? Pre. Oh, I'd so get, you were happy to be on stuff. stage. Oh, I'll get the hell out of there. Yeah. Like, like a sauna in yeah. there. So let's gone. let's back up. You go to Boston, you go to Berkeley, right? Yeah. yeah. I know that there's there's the Duke and the Drivers. Uh -huh. There's these bands. Jake Giles. Jake Giles Harris was the Smith Captain Howdy. Howdy. What was it? Not Captain Howdy, but Captain something. What? Uh, didn't Rick have a band? Uh, uh, I was in it. Captain oh, Swing. Captain Swing. Yeah. So Captain Swing becomes the car. That's Danny. Right. So you went up friend. there to join Captain. You were in Berkeley. No, I was in Boston. Yeah, doing it. Yeah. And I was playing country music in what they call the combat zone of Boston, which was like 42nd Street would be like the people yeah. in strip bars and shit. So I was playing country, country. And your Don Rich just, licks and all that stuff, just so yeah. I didn't have to go back to Long Island, you know, after the, the school year was over at Berkeley. Yeah. And I just liked Boston, and I started playing in bands. And you know how it is. It, Boston's kind of a small town now. Yeah, but music. See, you know, you meet yeah. guys from different bands, and bands break up, and you get the best guys from the. And it's an evolutionary process, and you, you get a combination you like. So what happened with this band? Rick and Ben and myself were in this band called Captain Swing. And there was a DJ at the big uh, BFM rock station, WBCN in Boston. Her name was Maxanne, uh, Maxanne Sartori. She was playing our demo tape in heavy rotation. And we went to New York to Max's Kansas City to play what they call a showcase gig. Yeah, sure. For a lot of the You big, paid. <laughs> the, that's right. And it was for the big time managers in New York uh, Bill O'Coin, yeah. Lieber and Krebs. Matt Weiss. Those guys came to <laughs> Those see guys, the cars. Yeah. Not the cars, the Captain Swing. Yeah. And their criticisms led to us putting it together the right way in the cars. They said, look, you guys, it's a, the songs are great. The, the, they're too long. It's too jammy. The solos are too long. The bass player looks like he should be a, a roadie for the Grateful Dead. You know, what was Ben Orr playing at that time? He wasn't playing. He was si just singing lead, which oh. was a, and it was a mistake, you know. And his wife made him these horrible silk Karate gi, peach color <laughs> silk. Oh, I love it. You got to picture this. So he's give us a year, Elliot. A, this was 76, 77. Okay, right? so it's glam 70. time. And he's in his karate gi with the prisoner of war slippers. The bass player has frizzy long hair and a beard and a lembic guild bass like Jack Cassidy. Yeah. And a drummer who, you know, it was like a Billy Cobb. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We just wanted a big 2 4 beat, you know. So they said that kind of stuff to us. They said, you guys got to put your image together. The songs need to be more concise. And we went back to Boston with our, kind of our tails between our legs, and we figured it out, you know? Did any of those we bits make it through, those song bits? Yeah, yeah. Bits, though, right? Well, Not... I, think by, I think we had Bye Bye Love and yeah. some of the, a couple of songs that we were already playing. 
And we got rid of a couple of guys that didn't fit. We got David Robinson in from the Modern Love. Uh, so well, Ben drums. was a not naturally a bass player? He was. We put oh. Ben back on bass. Oh, okay. He was so the only band he didn't play so, bass Okay, in. so he knew how to play bass. It wasn't like singer goes and he has to learn bass. He made a record bass. for Warner Brothers well, in 68. He was in a group in Cleveland called the Grasshoppers, and they were on television. So we went back to Boston and put it together. We got rid of the, the hippie guy. Yeah, and the you got a Cabo, drummer. We got yeah. a drummer. Put Ben back on bass where he belonged. And you got um, uh, and Greg. And Greg came back because uh, Greg had played with Rick and Ben in the band before Captain Swing oh, okay. called Richard and the Rabbits, yeah. which Jonathan Richmond named them. And he left to go play with Martin Mole. He was a fabulous furniture. And he was playing Who had sack. a beautiful L5. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Martin Moe. Yeah, Mo. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and Greg was playing sax with the fabulous furnitures. He came back, and so that was the cars. And, and David, our, the drummer, our drummer had a, a great eye. He was kind of like the, the, the art director of the band. He created the logo, the license plate. Oh, the really? Logo. Oh, okay. And he, we, we talked about what we should wear, and we were broke. You know, we were poor. We decided we would just wear black and white, which we stayed with. And because it was cheap, you could wear, buy a, a T-shirt and a pair of jeans, and, and it would look good. You'd look like a band. Right. So it was a way to, you know, kind of have a uniform look, and and we got it together, you know. And and uh, and, and who produced then? So, so so more so, demos. So this is what happened. So we got. No, this, what does they produce the first album? Roy Thomas Baker. Yeah, Roy Thomas Baker. So this is how what happened. How did that happen? I'll, yeah. I'll tell okay. You. So well, what happened was is that. We had we had this angel at this radio station WBCN Maxan, so she was play, she did this for Captain Swing and she was and then she did it for the Cars. We made demos, a, a two, live two track demos, yeah. and she started playing Best Friends Girl and Just What I Needed in heavy rotation, and it started getting reported on these radio tip sheets. The, the, for people who don't know, in the radio business in those days they had. Like this, it was one called the Gavin Report, Bill Gavin. Yeah, I remember, sure. And yeah. you know, Wednesday Morning Quarterback, or whatever it was called. And they would show what the big markets all around the country were playing in their top 40, so that the secondary and tertiary markets would know what to go on, what was hot. If you looked in that month, those months, at the Gavin Report, at with the WBCN, you know, it would say, like, Aerosmith, Get Your Wings, Columbia, right? Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, MCA Rocket, The Cars, Best Friends Girl, Tape. Tape. <laughs> so, wow. so and our guys in New York. So what, there was regional, a lot of regional there was a buzz. Play, there yeah. was a buzz. And, yeah. and, 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 and so the A&R people will say, they all subscribe to these radio tip sheets. Go, what the hell's going on in Boston? This band, who are the cars? They're getting reported nationally for a demo tape. So they started... So they started taking the Eastern Shuttle up to Boston oh, to come see us. At, I'm know, sorry, it was a better world that way. I'm telling you. Oh, what. of course it was. It was. No, without no, a doubt. Not to sound like well, an alto no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I want to say something. Yeah. I always tell people that I'm closer in in range to the world of the magnificent Mrs. Maisel yeah. than I am to today. I yeah. started in 82. Yeah. And so that was the comedy history. 70s is when it took off. If I say the mountains, you know what I mean. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, the Cal oh, the, yeah. Yeah. It was Rocky. I don't yeah, mean no, no. Leslie West either. No, no, no. I thought you were talking I, about a band. Oh, no, yeah, no, the, no mountains. the mountain. Well, you yeah, wouldn't yeah, know yeah, mountains. You, you go play the Cavs, kill. And the I had, mountains. And I had comics that had played there. I had comics there, there that were writers for other people. And just that world where it was all about how good you were. Yes. Yeah. You know, all well, the about bar how, is a little lower. Now? Yeah. <laughs> but wait a minute. There is no, there is bar, no bar. bar. Because there is no what's getting heavy rotation. There is no, no. rotation. No. There's no. just. You know what? You there know was what? a pause. It's, all, yeah. it's yeah. all. By the way, I'm really happy with show business, with music, with everything. But. It was fucking better. Yes. And don't ever think you're an old guy. No, no, no. That. It was no. better because, you know, there was a pie, right? You know, you got a piece of the pie. Yeah. Everybody started complaining about the pie. They wanted yeah. more of the pie. Right. Now everybody gets the whole pie. They don't know what the hell to do with it. I have to say, there is not a Cars album that I didn't buy when it came out the first week it came out. Thank you. Not one. Uh, that's a band my that I've loved. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure, though. But no, I really... I Talk about a band that I loved. Wow. 
And and uh, and then as you guys went on, look, early on it was like you described it perfectly. It was right of 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 punk and 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 uh, new wave ish, right. and it, but it was uh, far to the left of what I was listening to. So right. it, it was like a, a thing. But boy, oh boy, as it moved on with MTV and what Rick oh, yeah. was writing, you cut some great fucking pop tunes. I mean, even the rock and roll, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But these are, you're beaming from the first note till the end. Oh, and then you man. add in these great fucking Great videos. video directors, yeah, too. Yeah, a but, great video yeah, director. you know, even you know, Drive. Twisted. That <laughs> one, The Fly. Oh, the, yeah, The Fly. The yeah, Fly. Yeah, yeah, oh, the oh, oh, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but but yeah, I'm saying, yeah. that was interesting. So I have a question for you. Yes. So you guys will go on the road. You, you went on the road. I saw you, you know. Sure. So are you, it's the thing with Springsteen. Springsteen, I don't know how he fucking pulls it off because when I do material, there are nights where I'm like, no, I'm not doing any material tonight. I don't want to hear my own voice. I got to improvise, and I do most mostly. So you're going up, and the audience wants the hits, and you always have to play the hits. But did Rick, and I'm talking about you guys as a band, go, all right, we're going to do this song because we love playing it. Not as much that they they love it. This is a song uh, uh, from Heartbeat City, whatever, where you go, this is not a hit, but we fucking love to play this. How, how did that happen with the running order and all that? Well, we, when, you, when we put together a show for that particular year of touring or whatever, right. there's certain songs that if you have certain hits, you can't go on stage Without a and doubt charge people $50 and not play right. just what I needed in Best right. Friends Girl right. and Good Times. You have right. to. right. But, you know, in a long set, we could always inject some of our There's favorites. not much you could put. And, and by the way, you're totally right. <laughs> you know? What kind of set? Long what set? Kind is, of it, set? <laughs> is it a six-hour car set? Yeah. I mean, you guys had so many hits. And even the ones that weren't top ten hits, there were still songs that yeah, they all didn't, they Cars didn't, fans Jeff, knew. they didn't have bathroom songs. No, they did not have bathroom songs. <laughs> and, and when you got to pee at a Cars concert... You got to stay in your seat. Yeah, you got no choice. <laughs> they give out buckets. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows Keith Richards keeps the soul of the Rolling Stones going, but Mick obsesses about the running order. The running order is like his thing. I have seen bands that I admire, and I know their work so well that afterwards, I don't say this to him. I'm like. You guys should really look at that running order. It is not good. Well, the it best rock not... and roll front man who ever lived is going to know how to work an audience. Exactly. And also, he's going to know. Lived. Exactly. Right. He's, he's also going to know what his voice is capable of that one right. after another. Right. Yeah. But when you get to that level, mm. it, it almost doesn't matter. Well, but when I saw them and they started with Rocks Off one day, I went crazy. Because they started with a song, I thought that I would never see them I play live. And they, and they had a way of doing that, you How'd know. You see them at a bar. They played a sneak gig. They were rehearsing at Long Longview Farms out in Worcester, Massachusetts, and they played the a surprise gig, gig, surprise little bar gig at Sir Morgan's Cove. It was like a bar that held about 150 people, oh. and it was a secret. Sur and and uh, uh, and Stu, Ian, uh, yeah, Stu was giving out bumper stickers. And if WBCN, and if he saw that, he, you got a ticket to Sir Morgan's Cove. But we were the cars, we knew about the gig. And everybody said, don't even try to go. And I said, I'm going, I'm taking my girlfriend, I'm getting a limo, and I'm going to have a great time. A limo, what are you, crazy? Even the Stones aren't, they're going to think you're the Rolling Stones, they're going to mob you. And this and I said, get the fuck. Pull up, <laughs> the, the driver goes to the front of the club. The doorman says who he's got in the car, whisks us in, yeah. and I'm sitting this far away from the Stones on stage. Oh. It was incredible. Yes, yeah, it was. was. Like they did the Elmo combo. When mm. Yeah, yeah, right, busted, right. You know? Or when they showed up in, in Chicago with Muddy, you know, yeah, Muddy right. Water. Right. At least whatever. there's video of that. Yeah. Right. With them with, with Muddy. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's and amazing. there's also... And God, and God bless those guys for what they did. For well, Chicago, the way, for Chicago I, blues. Have you, have you ever you know? taken the tour of um, chess? Yeah, yes, I have. Okay. I, uh, yeah. What's fascinating about it 
Yes, to think of all Willie Dixon and all the guys there, but it's also fascinating to think of a young Fleetwood Mac and a young Rolling Stone yes. sure. being there. Recording, yeah. Being yeah. There. And, they, and they actually are very clear there about that history, That's too. Right. They're, they, you know, I got goosebumps because it was so moving to me. That's why they went so, to Memphis, right. too. Did you know that yeah. the Yardbirds recorded at Sun Studios in Memphis? Right. I know the Stones because wanted Trey to. Trey kept the role. It was yeah. Johnny Burnett Trio. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, on the... it's, and it's all connected. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the Yardbirds recorded there. Yeah. Recorded there. What is your favorite one that you wrote for the band? Riff. Oh, gosh. If you had to pick one. I, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, although I do. By the way, if you ask me, you, you look crazy. Oh, do you have a favorite because, song out because of the I, cars? Whole off, catalog? I've never spent four days. Well, I've written movies and stuff, but I'm an improviser. So for me, I love hearing a story of someone who saw me and I made up something that I don't remember. Of and course, I'm like, wow, I did that. The one spot yeah. in, in the car show every night where I was able to stretch out and go uh, somewhere else was You're All I've Got Tonight. Oh, oh really? So, and, and so, yeah. I, you know, I would start the solo, right, with the um, theme. Yeah, I, I don't know that. Go ahead. Um, and then yeah, I, yeah, there's yeah. a lick that I stole from Sugar Cane Harris on Hot Rats. The, and it's just and it's just like the, you, these bits and, and pieces come and together then, you know so then i could go out and i could bring the band back in with the <laughs> Distinct. Well, yours and is it Greg Hawks? Keyboard. Yeah, keyboard player. Mm -hmm. You guys, every fucking song, you're there. Like they, they, we they, worked they, very closely together. Oh, you did. The, How much I, rehearsing was there? A good amount. A good amount, I bet, because that stuff is built. Yeah, it you is. know. It is. I mean, it's not like let's jam and see. You know, the Stones no. will turn the tape on and jam and then cut up pieces. Well, when, you can, the, start when you can feel the <laughs> art. But you know there's a lot of craft that went into it. Yeah. Like if the art can pop through the craft, that's what I always find. I mean, it just takes you away. But it has to feel yeah. Those solos, yeah. though, are pretty fucking hard. Well, his, his solos, <laughs> you know? but also, what I also I find mean, that, you have to learn them. By the way, you, what I was about to say is the car solos, which are, I mean, not just unique to them, but your solos are very concise. Thank you, they're sir. very fucking. They don't they're give me twelve like, bars. I, I know, <laughs> but they're perfection in twelve bars. It is like that they. That's my thing. Not one well, note. Sure. It's like, it's, but note. that's what's fascinating. Well, so is song. so is something. You know. Right. So that's is right. so is Scotty Moore's work with Elvis. You know you gotta play it that solos? way. You know. I don't know if you'd be interested, but the, are you talking about the, Scotty Moore or or no, me? Oh, you. The process. Yeah. Is. We, we, you know, we had Roy Thomas Baker was our producer. He had just done Bohemian Rhapsody with Queen. Right. He was known for those massive background vocals, those right. stacked vocals. And to do that in pre-digital days, you needed a lot of open tracks on tape to bounce yeah. down and down, yeah. keep over the slave voices. tapes and yeah. So we, yeah. Would, we would do basic tracks, just bass drums and some rhythm instrument, either a guitar or one keyboard, and go right into vocal land and start doing the overdubs because we had the empty tracks. So we wouldn't get to the guitar parts to, towards the end of the project. Oh, wow. So I would take a cassette of the, of the basic track back to the hotel with me. I have a guitar with me. And I'd work on parts. Oh. And I'd, you know. You'd I go to the well. I remember writing yeah. Touch and Go, like sitting in the yeah. St. Regis, you know. Or, uh, I, I wrote the Today She Comes at Morgan's. <laughs> I remember sitting there. And did you feel like... You had it by the time you got to the studio? Oh, yeah. Exactly what you wanted? Yeah. And did and you get any, any blowback? Rick Happy? Yes, but, but, but one of the solos that I get the most compliments about, they wanted to reject it first, was Touch and Go. I worked on this solo and constructed the solo. I thought it was very beautiful, and I wanted to like get a little steely danish, a little, be little yeah. bit in there, like a little jazzy. So we were recording here in L.A. at uh, Cherokee. I play the solo perfectly, and there's silence in the control room. I'm like, I don't know. Could you try maybe another approach? They, <laughs> Work your ass off. They on got it. me where I had. I was playing one of Ben's basses upside down, in a in a, a Fender re Twin reverb amp with tremolo, playing 
six string, like a baritone guitar. Yeah, yeah, playing Pe some solo. Dwayne Eddy. Yeah. Finally, I, I was in tears. I said, you can fuck this. And I, <laughs> the, I grabbed the guitar. I said, this is a fucking solo. And, and I said, you take this. And I played the solo, like tears flying out of my eyes. And they said, now you got it. it before it sounded like you were thinking about it too much. And I could have fucking killed them. Because they were full of shit when they said that to you. I they realized, the no, my, after yeah, trying yeah, every so other... That, no, that's the kind of apology we're talking but about. They, but they saw <laughs> my, no, no, that's an example. And they saw my reaction people, and they backed up a little well, bit. Well, yeah, because they I, have I, to respect I, that. It's like, are you fucking crazy? This is the best thing I've ever done in my life. You're not going to let me put it on the record? Fuck you. By the way, one thing I can say about Larry David, in that exact way, I'll do something, he'll go, oh, don't do that again, I don't like it. And I remember a few times, one in particular, I was doing this thing on a plane where I am, we're, we're flying to New York and I'm just sitting like this. He goes, what are you doing? I go, I just sit. The producer the series. Yeah, yes, and <laughs> yeah. we're going out for That's that. Easy. And I'm looking straight ahead and he goes, don't you read or do No, I'm just flying. <laughs> and he, after we did it, he goes, don't do that again. But he used it. Of course he used you it. Know, we, I did it, it like three or four. Yeah, I, you know, four five hours. By the way, just like you say, people come up to me and they say that, you know. Uh, it's so funny. And that, and, but, that's, but isn't it amazing, though, I'm hearing you tell that story and I go, because we always look, uh, I don't know if it's our narcissistic ways, but you always go, wow, I'm really associating with this because I experienced that in the world of comedy. Well, no, it's a heartbreaking I, in a way. By the way, yeah. that solo. On touch and go is fucking great. Thank that you. song is. Can you imagine if, if, if instead the solo was like, you know, like. <laughs> that's what they had. <laughs> I was uh, crying already. Oh, dear God. Well, you I'm know what, though? Play you play are not a tool. You can play the deepest music in the world, but the intent is to communicate. That's it. That is the intent. So when I do comedy, it's to communicate and make you laugh, not for you to go. The worst thing in the world are clever comics. I, I don't like that. Don't turn uh, your back on the audience. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah. don't want to, yeah. like, do this while I'm enjoying, you know, when I'm listening to your comedy or your music. Right. I want to just, like, feel it. I feel every fucking car song. But I never wanted to be one of those guitar players who's playing to an audience of guitar players. I like oh. to play oh, for the people. folded arms. I want to yeah. play for people. Always. Like you, were you know, yeah. I worked with Yank Rachel, who was about 90 when I worked with him. A man, blues mandolin player from Chicago. Worked with Sonny Boy Williamson one, worked with everybody, right? And he Yankee. said, Yank said to me uh, one day in a conversation, don't forget, we're not musicians, we're entertainers. That's right. You know, and if people well, aren't right. dancing or moving or ha have a you're smile doing on their wrong. face, That's you're doing, yeah, you're, you and ain't if making you wanna, it. You know, look, yeah. if you want to experiment, look, I, I experiment, I, I improvise, but my entire thing is about communicating and entertaining. Yeah. Why should people spend the money to come see you if you're not communicating and entertaining? Yeah. But people that want to see that, yeah. you know, there are people too, because now we're so niche. There are people that want to see some real chopsy kind of prog stuff, well, and they want to see that, but, yeah, but not everybody. But people that, 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 want to sit in the front row at Don go Rickles see and fish. get torn apart yeah, well, by Don that, Well, you know, that, that, no, no, I'm saying, if that's what got you Got a couple want, days, yeah. Jam, yeah, jamming, <laughs> yeah. go see fish, they'll do it for no, you. No, well, jamming, as we know, you know, yeah. jamming really... I saw the dead a lot of times at the film. The Butterfield world. Band oh. started that, started oh, that. East you know, East West, they started that stuff. They invented psychedelic rock. How about that song? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. by the way, being a Jew from Chicago who loves guitar, he's. He, you Bloomfield, got Bloomfield, and he, Bloomfield. that's my guy, man. Yeah. Yep. And I that. I to give up living. And right? that last. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He did so much great. Oh, you know, I mean, just big bowl of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and but but you know, still not not a not a hero. Him and John, him and, yeah, 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 ah, got the blue field off, yeah. <laughs> hey, blue field off, uh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and then, uh, then he, and, and he went for it, even if he didn't make it, yeah. you know? By the way, Bob Dylan, was one of those people that could never play the song the same again. 
That's true. He never wanted to. I know he never wanted to. You know, I'm that's saying. the blues. It's amazing. You can do it. That's why I asked but you. But that's the blues. Hey, that see, Bob is basically a, a blues, a old yeah, blues yeah, man. Most certainly, I feel that. You know, and it really is. That's, uh, his, that's his legacy, and, true. And, you know, and then got all that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti stuff. Right. And, you know, but we just lost you know, like, all the yes, Lawrence yes, Ferlinghetti. Yeah, 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 well, country blues, yeah. but also Lightning Hopkins, that kind of stuff, you know. And and Bob also is a poet, so... Really influenced by Chuck Berry, if you really listen, you know, to, to some right. of the Chuck Berry's uh, poetry. Yeah. Bob has a lot of that, too. I think that... I, I completely agree Direct with lineage, you. and then, and then, then, then the Beatles and, and, get and that. And the French Romanist poets. Yes, the, the, of course. The teenagers, you know, who wrote... Where would the oh, Beatles yeah, well, be without Chuck Berry or Buddy Holly? Would well, they the, have even and existed? The girl, and the girl groups. The and Shirelles. the girl groups, yeah, yeah. Oh, the girl groups were great, yeah. Well, yeah. you know... They wouldn't be anywhere. That, Truly, that, that anywhere. song, that that era of you know, uh, uh, you know, eight ninety Broadway, mm -hmm. you know, the Brill Building, right. the Ten Pan Alley, the songwriter Neil Diamond's writing songs for you, Hello you know, for the monkeys. Again. Hello, <laughs> I just called Longfellow <laughs> Serenade. As he, as he got later in life, when he'd be in concert, he would suddenly yell, "We're coming to America today!" <laughs> Song, song, blue, creeping in my window. What a writer, though, you know, man. Yeah, no, I, I'm with yeah. you, yeah. But no, oh, oh, yeah, well, he just started yelling like that. Yeah, right? yeah, oh, yeah, because towards the end. Well, know, Dylan did that for a while, too. I was too. always involved with a woman that wanted to go see Neil Diamond. I even got engaged uh, to my, I would say, first wife, my only wife, uh, at a Neil Diamond. He was singing, uh, he was doing a... Neil Love Diamond on the Rocks. Did, well, no, no, he did. A, he had a Christmas <laughs> album. Yeah. He had a Christmas, and so he did Christmas songs. He'd go out on tour and do the Christmas songs, and then he'd go, "I want to do a song for my people, a song for his people." Yeah, a little self-loathing, and he would go, "Hava, Nagila, Hava," <laughs> and he's in the round at Nagila. Chicago State. Oh. He's in the round, and when he faced us, I turned to her and I go, "Will you marry me?" She said. Yeah, she goes, why did you ask me now? I go, I want to ask you at a time and a place that you never forget. Hava Nagila. Neil, Neil, so Neil Diamond doing Hava Another Hava guy Nagila. has no bathroom songs, so. No bathroom you gotta no. Would you gotta... believe that I once knocked on Neil Diamond's parents' door in Massapequa because we saw Neil's car in the driveway to borrow a guitar string from Neil, and he gave me a guitar string. I, it, did you what? know him? Did you know his no. parents? No. On Franco Road, I, we were... Practicing with my my band, this is like '68 or something like that, like junior high, and we're playing on a Sunday. I break a string on my cheap Japanese electric. There's no nothing open, and we we know Neil's not, his parents had a little tie shop in the shopping center where you'd go buy your Father's Day present, and we could see this yellow Con Lincoln Continental. We knew Neil was there visiting his parents. So this was a Sunday. I broke a string on my guitar. Where are we gonna get a string? Oh, Neil's, Neil's home. Oh, God. Neil crossed the street, directly across the street, <laughs> knocked on the parents' door. Neil answers in a bathing suit. I would never forget it. <laughs> hello, hello, young fella. Mr. <laughs> like, Mr. Diamond, you wouldn't happen to have a guitar string or broke a string we're having our band practice. He goes, sure, I do. He goes out to the trunk of his car, and he's got a guitar in the trunk, and he opens up the case, and he gives me a Gibson Sonomatic Oh, string. not black diamonds? Oh. But I kept that string envelope. <laughs> yeah, Sonomatic. I, I, I kept it forever. The whole pack. And I, and not I can't even I come close. To, I can only, the, the closest I can come to that story <laughs> is, is, the is ringing, man. is in the next town Jim Bouton lived, okay? Oh. Uh, right. And so it, it's me and my brother's <laughs> Ringing Jim Bouton. By the way, he had a really let bad. Me just clarify he was a something. Yankee Jim, pitcher. Jim Bouton was a pitcher for the New York Yankees. The Yankees, and, and he Seattle, wrote Seattle Pilots. He wrote the greatest book on baseball, the, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, called Ball, Ball Four. Four. Ball if Four. If you love baseball, what this book is known for, it was the first book ever that showed the behind, yeah. Yeah. behind the wall. And yeah. did you see Stangle? Can anybody here play this game? Oh, yes. Really? When he first, when the oh, Mets first came out. It. So Bouton, right? He had a bad oh. year. It was towards the end. It you must have been. Pictures of all time of Casey Stengel's like this with the Mets. Popeye. He looks yeah. like Popeye. He was managing Popeye. the Mets. Deck yeah. Pappy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So Jim Bouton lived in the next town, and we knew it. So me and my brothers went over. He was having a really bad. <laughs> had had a really bad year. It was off season, and we rang his doorbell and hid in the bushes and yelled. You suck! <laughs> no! No! Oh, Jesus Christ. No! We did. No. We did. I hate He came that. up. Oh, he looked God. around. 
like it had happened oh. before. Oh. No, like, like here no. they are again. It was like, again? Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's the worst. Well, he was bad that year. So, you know, we were like, I don't know, nine. I was <laughs> sitting behind the, I always have a sorry, story sorry, based on we, something. Sorry, I Jim Bowden. I take it back. Oh, really? I saw the Eminem boys in a twilight doubleheader at the old Yankee Stadium around 61. I, I guess I was about, I don't know. Six or six. 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 You were six. Six years old. And my father's friend took me and him, and we were in center field. We go, Mickey, Mick, Mick. And he actually turned around and waited. It was like, like God knew who he was. It was like, he saw, he acknowledged that we, he knows that we exist on this planet. It was like, yeah, that's before right. you wrap up this, yeah. uh, this episode, yes, sir. I know there's going to be Gibson fans watching this who are going yeah, to talk about this what thing. the hell this thing is. Oh, yeah, because that's, yeah, you're. This is a pretty crazy guitar. Tell them. I could. I love so, it, by the way. I, I'm a gearhead, too. So, yeah, yeah. All right, so this guitar was a concept guitar. Uh -huh. I had a concept. The concept was, what would a 1964 Les Paul look like if it hadn't been discontinued in 1960? Yeah. That's a great premise. Well, so the there's the bridge. So, what would, yeah. so I, I, yeah. I went with Pelham Blue, like a Firebird, you yeah. know, a custom color. The black plastic and the knobs, like right. 60s. Um, Nylon saddles. Nylon saddles. Right. Uh, uh, stingers. They yeah. call these stingers right. on the back. Stingers of the headstock. on the yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan of the stingers. And then I'm into like Exotica and. Well, that's your tiki, thing, the tiki, tiki thing. stuff. Yeah. So I got my. They inlaid a tiki on there for me. But this is what my idea of what a 64 Paul would be. Right. Well, that's, that, that's that, really cool. Isn't that funny? So they made you that one and then you decided. Because you have. Feel I felt that it's it. so it doesn't, light. It doesn't is it chamber? Way. No. I don't think oh my! Well, I have the new. Did the aliens build this? <laughs> Jesus! I have the new, but but I have the new um, the um, which I bought for anyone watching. Uh, I have the new '59 Murphy Lab. Les oh yeah, Paul, oh, yeah. Which is just it's gorgeous, gorgeous but also crazy light. You yeah. know, that's why people love the SGs at a certain point because they're they have to be. But so there's light. a stress problem. I have a permanent yeah. cricket. There, there is a, you can't I'm leave. Playing a Les Paul custom right. two hours a night on stage, a black oh one. My. Must have it was like a bowling ball. I have ball. one. I have a '54 with a staple. Pickup. This was a '79. Oh, those were the heaviest. Like Twelve pounds. Those boat those were, anchor. Oh my God. Holy crap. I mean, from the late '60s to however long. Those way, those were almost like. Yeah. By the way, I well, need the to hold sixty-eight, I'm, yeah, I'm the crippled. sixty-eight Black Beauty was was heavy. I'm crippled. Heavy, yeah. I, 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 but that's why. I, I, they, I, I, but you have your own Gibson model in SG, right? I had, I, I had two. I had the and the Tiki Bird, right? The Firebird with yeah. the Tiki. Yeah, but yeah I had Firebird. The, you Italian? <laughs> you can't be no. <laughs> Are you an albino I'm Italian? Pizza, so. <laughs> Look, if you tuned in to learn about guitar, hopefully you did. If you tuned in because you're a Cars fan, I know I was giddy the whole time. I may have spoken too much, but nonetheless, Elliot fucking Easton is sitting next to me. I'm a guy who paid to see him in concert. I'm a guy who paid and still owns all my Cars <laughs> albums. I can't fucking believe it. Elliot, Elliot though, an honor to be with you. We thank you, man. You thank will you, come back again, uh, please. We're shaking hands again. Oh, we got plenty of sanitizer, Elliot. And it's so good to, to, to learn that you're we will a hang again a sooner guy. than later. Yeah, yeah, we'll have a we'll we'll, we'll go we'll go to Brent's. Well, sure. By the way. I just want to say, if you come to L.A., there's a lot of things people tell you to do when you come to L.A. Uh, my highest recommendation in Northridge, there's also one out by where West you Lake live Village. in Westlake Village. But Brent's in Northridge mm -hmm. is as good a deli. Uh, I as love you'll get. Great you can meal. fade out Mark on this. Yeah, <laughs> fade we're, out we're, we're, while we're talking about we'll food and again. run the credits. We're going to record more. Uh, 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 the uh, the well, it'll, be, it'll be always somebody delightful. And uh, thank you for watching because you're taking up your time and I appreciate it. Thank that. you both for thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you, Elm. Thanks, guys. Uh -huh.